What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Evoke Bike Podcast. I'm here with Landry Bobo, and I'm Brendan Hausler. And so, we, what's up? How you doing, Landry? I'm great. I got to ride my bike today, so can't awesome. complain. Good, good. I did too, but I kind of it was a weird ride as I had posted on Strava. I'm, I just think it was lack of carbs. I didn't feel great, but I had some decent times on some climbs, and it's a little hot, but I don't know. It was a weird one. Um, and actually, this is a great intro because we're that's talking. what I was going to say. I was like, <laughs> didn't feel like I had enough carbs. Like, I'm like, that's perfect. That's this is a great, this is, I did not even play. <laughs> Today was going to be a rest day, the last day of the rest week. And then it's going to be crappy tomorrow. And I felt pretty good this morning. I had rested Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, for the most part. Did one day with some short sprints and one day did a two minute KOM. Today I felt okay. And I was like, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to go out and rip a couple short, like VO2 maxi intervals, not intervals, excuse me, go for some KOMs, have that motivation. You were, going for my, you were going for my KOM. No, I was not going for your KOM. I actually, oh, I started. So here's the problem. Here's the problem. Let me tell you the story. So I started, <laughs> it was hot. So this was unplanned. So last night I did not carb load, which I would have. And even, not even carb load, would have leaned my diet towards carbs. I had like some chipotle and that was it and like went to bed and it was i would have had more rice or some more um maybe bought some bread or i don't know whatever so i get up i'm like well i'm gonna do this ride i think damn so i ate some oatmeal probably like 100 to 120 grams of carbs in that waited an hour and a half ate a thing of rice and then it was like three hours so i was gonna go crush so I drank some honey and syrup and I was like, well, that's all really all the time I have for whatever. I'll be fine. I'll go test it out. It was a little hotter by the time I left. So I'm rolling down the short loop. They're paving the entire backside outside of Valley Crucis. So I'm sitting on this like super sticky stuff and I'm like, this sucks. And it went all the way until that first KOM started and I caught a car. So I was like, all right, I'm going to bail on this one anyways. And I really wanted to go for Oak that white uh, oak that's my klm do you have that i thought travis had that no i have that one okay you're not allowed to do that well i'm going for it and the problem (laughs) was i went for baird first that's first right the super steep one so i beat my time by i don't know what but i got third place which is like a four and a half minute kom which i was not feeling good towards the end of that like what is wrong with me this sucks but it's weird i've been feeling really light on the climbs so then I recovered. I went for White Oak, did not get that. Got within three minutes of my best time. Or excuse me, yeah, three minutes. Three like, seconds. Geez, Brendan going <laughs> yeah. like endurance pace up that. Yeah, three seconds. And I was like kind of quitting. So I'm sort of pissed about that. I would have at least PR'd it, but I just felt empty. And so just not enough carbs, I think. And also, I know you're coming. You're like, dude, I can't wait to get back to 3,000 feet. When I go from 0, 500-ish to 3,500, 4,500, I feel that. And I don't know why I'm so sensitive to altitude. It's always day three and four. Today is day four. And I just was like, oh, this feels gross. And then my Garmin was like, you're acclimated to 2,600 feet. I'm like, great. So like nothing. So I think it was a combo of the no carbs, the altitude and the heat, but the heat wasn't horribly bad. So I think it was just an off day. I'm going to rest tomorrow, go for a little hike and then do some endurance rides this weekend. It leaves me a little like scratching my head because nationals is next Thursday, but there's really nothing you can do at this point. I think the thing that is easy to do is like, okay, well, I'm going to rest. I'm going to go hard on Saturday to make sure I'm back to normal. If you're not, that's just another day that you're digging yourself into a hole. So I think the long ride will do me well and some rest and just, I was riding great last week before the rest week. So I think it was just a weird day, but the no carbs leads us into a topic that you had brought up one time saying, you know, when athletes want to lose weight mid season, when do you decide to sacrifice training for weight loss, if ever, and how do you look at, is the weight loss important for watts per kg for the type of racing that the athlete's doing? Or like many American races, I'm not saying weight doesn't matter, but if I'm 185 or 180, 
yeah, five pounds. I mean, that matters. Pick up a five pound bag of sugar, but am I going to go on a crash diet? Definitely not. I think it, it should be a reminder for the athlete for the next season to correct those errors that got them to 185. People are like, dude, you're 185. Um, because I definitely race better when I'm 180, but it's uh, how do you kind of follow that? Um, and you made another point too, like, are you trained? How does the body feel some, some days? Are you trained too hard? Are you under fuel? If you start to feel weak? I mean, that's, I think the number one time when athletes start to go too hard is when they're not feeling good. And that's definitely not when you want to go too hard. So I just spoke a lot. What's kind of jumping out to you? A lot of times, at least it took me a long time, just a long, long time to figure this out, but just how much my nutrition and my diet actually affected my riding, you know, so it'd always be like, oh, it's a rest day. I shouldn't eat too much. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to eat too many carbs. And then, you know, <laughs> it'd be like the day before the race. And then I do the race and I'm like, wow, why do my legs feel so bad? And I was like, cause you didn't <laughs> eat the carb yesterday. And like, I always say this, like trying to get my athletes who maybe struggle a little bit with the fueling, like to pick up on the, the signs of under fueling. Like if your legs feel like they don't have any power, then it's like, they don't have the fuel. Um, and I think there's like a telltale sign to me that somebody might be under fueled for a workout or just in general is if they can't get their heart rate up to where it needs to be. Um, and they like, can't hit the numbers. So, you know, basically if I normally do a VO two max interval at 400 Watts, and then the next day I can only go out and, you know, maybe my hurry, I can get to 190. maybe the next week I go out and I can only get up to like 180 heart rate and can't hit the same power numbers. You know, kind of what that means is, um, I don't have the energy in my legs to drive my heart rate up high enough, you know, cause an effort like that is purely reliant on carbohydrates pretty much just about like, and so I guess just picking up on, <laughs> on those signs of, um, you know, of under fueling of why do I feel this way? Is it because I'm overtrained or is it because I'm under recovered or not doing or not eating right, really. I think that people undervalue how important, you know, what you eat actually is. I mean, you want to drive your car from here to Rochester, um, you gotta, you gotta put fuel in the car, you know? What do you, to play devil's advocate on that point, do you think that the lower heart rate could be more from fitness gains? So they're riding more, it's the next week, they've had just done some like, big rides over the weekend. They come back to the ride, maybe 10 beats per minute is a little extreme, but I've never been worried if I can drive my heart rate up too high. Um, and when I'm riding a lot and still feeling good, my heart rate's definitely lower. Yeah. So how would you parse that out? Uh, well, I mean, if they're not able to hit the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm. they, and also, you know, I okay, have, that's good. That, yeah, that makes sense. If they don't have the power. Yeah. And, I mean, and I have uh, athletes also comment, like, how did this ride feel? And they're like, I felt really bad. <laughs> and then you look at their file and they're not able to get the heart rate up. And it's like, hmm, what did you eat last night? How was the nutrition? And they're like, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't actually really have that many carbs. And you just, especially the newer riders, you just got to keep reminding them. And I'll share with them links of, you know, some nutrition articles that I have to try to get them to, uh, to improve that. So... That's actually huge. I mean, I even remember working back in the hospital. I was not tapped into carb timing and what I was eating and fueling the ride. And there are definitely some days when I think back in retrospect, like I remember thinking, man, I had a bad day. I don't know why. And then I think back, I'm like, what was I even eating back then? And definitely not clean eating, but definitely also not even thinking about carbs. And I actually remember the first time I got mega dropped, uh, ran out of energy on this one climb. And someone asked me, they're like, were you partying this week? And I was like, yeah, I went out on Friday. They're like to like when I was like, I don't know, it's like two 30. They're like, that's why you sucked at the race. I'm like, but the race was Sunday. <laughs> like, do you think you got better? And one, one more, like you had just Saturday between them. I'm like, well, yeah, I, yeah. 
no, they're like, oh, you have so much to learn. This is amazing. But it's easy to forget that that's where some people start with their knowledge of their body and how it runs as a machine. You need to treat this thing like a machine. And so the reason I brought that up is with work, my job was kind of like when I was at a hospital, it could get chaotic. I wasn't thinking about planning eating. So when I read an athlete say, the day got busy, I didn't eat. And then I went to this ride. It sucked. I'm like, why you need, how did you not plan? I have to remind myself, okay, sometimes someday jobs are like that. They just get rolling and you need to bring your food and you need to carve out. I don't care if it's 10 minutes. You need to be like, yo, I'm taking a 10 minute break. I need to eat this food because at 6 PM, I'm going to go try and crush. And if you don't do that, uh, it's just not going to go well. So planning is huge, but what, let's talk about the weight loss. I think that's really interesting because I want to hear your take on it first. Let's say it's, let's say athletes have a race in two months time. And in my mind, quickly thinking about it, I don't think whether it's April or July, it matters. And someone's like, yo, I got to start losing some weight for this event. How do you think about this? Yeah. I mean, first of all, you got to look at what, what event are they doing? So, so I mean, let's I, say it is going to be like rolling or climbing. So there are some hills. Yeah. I mean, we have to think about like, I mean, what kind of training are we doing? Are we doing, are we doing high intensity? And we also have to think about, I mean, what do you actually weigh and what do you want to get down to? I mean, some people, it might be like, oh, I need to lose five pounds. And it's like, you know, maybe this course, five pounds, make some difference, but I think you're going to make a lot more gains if we're able to train harder. I mean, if you're trying to lose weight when we're doing really high intensity, you're not going to, you're not going to do as well. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's also, uh, you know, if, if somebody is a little bit overweight, it's, it's more of a long-term thing, you know, it's just maybe some habits that need to be changed long term it's not just oh season's coming i gotta lose 10 pounds it's just like you know you don't you don't get fat by eating one cheeseburger you know we need to make some long-term changes just habitually and you know not stress too much about it and just as a byproduct of training hard if you're eating right and fueling the work your body's going to adapt and you're probably just going to naturally get leaner just as a Mm -hmm. byproduct of totally burning a lot of calories that's what I was going to say is even the, the riding alone, you know, continually burning fat, continually burning carbs, can continually turn yourself into this food combustible machine. You will get leaner. Now, yeah, you can't come home from a ride. I think some people do it wrong. They go for like a four hour ride, burn 2000 cages and like, I can eat a whole pizza. It's like, ah, no, not really. But at the same time, to jump back to what you said, to make this relatable to an athlete at any point in their journey, when we're, we're talking about five pounds, if someone is severely overweight, five pounds, even if there's climbs, is going to make no difference whatsoever. Continue just riding, fuel your rides, learn how to ride long. If someone is, you know, moderately overweight, losing five pounds for one race in two months you're right. I think the long-term picture is the most important thing. And then if someone is around their waist rate, around their race weight, and let's say they think they could win this race, you still really have to think about is the five pound loss and trying to lose it in the next two months and possibly sacrificing power where the power might be the thing that lets you break away and you're riding super strong I don't know. It's a tough call. Um, So I think more often than not lean on looking at the big picture and definitely don't crash diet um, no matter where you're at, because it's just going to leave you feeling like crap in the end. And your body's smart. It's going to rebound and start. Um, There's much smarter people talking about this on the internet. You know, your body rebounds and starts storing fat and then you end up not looking so great. And you, you're like, what, what the hell's happened? So when would you, when do you have athletes undergo weight loss and how do you do it? I mean, I would only have them do it intentionally, like try to lose weight 
in the off season, you know, when maybe even in October or something, you know, let's just have a conversation about what, you know, let's take a look at where you're eating. Maybe here's how we could improve it. Um, you know, let's have you hit the gym. I think that that's actually a really good way to get leaner uh, and to build functional muscle <clears throat> as well. Um, but, you know, it's a, again, it's about making those long-term changes, kind of like how we talk about, you know, training as being a long-term process. It's just, you know, especially if you're newer to riding, it takes time to kind of morph your body into a cyclist body. I mean, when I started riding, I wasn't fat by any means, but I had chicken legs and I, I wasn't that lean. I was just the skinny little gamer kid, um, you know, and I would look at some of these, uh, these guys in the pro one field and they just had these, you know, these just ripped legs and they were super lean. And it was like, man, I, I want to look like that one day, you know, but it does, it's just like, it's kind of like how, if you, if you lift weights every day, like you're not going to look like John Cena after one year, you know, you just got to lift continually. And just as long as you're eating right. And if you're training hard and listening to your body, like your body's naturally going to adapt to find, to find the best weight for it. You know, mm -hmm. I think I made the mistake too much of like trying to control my weight of just like, Oh, well, you know, I want to be a good climber. So I need to be as light as, you know, the, the skinniest guy in the world tour, you know, I was like, Oh, I used to look up the weights of riders on Google of like, Oh, you know, I'm six one and you know, George Bennett's five eleven, and he weighs 130 pounds. So that's what I got away, you yeah. know, and I would try to control my weight and I'm like, okay, but you've got a bigger frame. You've got wider hips and you feel like garbage and you feel like you're starving yourself and you have no muscle. <laughs> and it's like, you know, your body is telling you that, you know, you just need to listen to your body. Now that's kind of the opposite of weight loss. Right. But all that to say, my body naturally found the weight that was best for it, which was like 145 to 150 pounds. And just by listening to my body, I naturally built, you know, the functional muscle mass that I needed. And similar to weight loss, you know, your body as, as a survival mechanism, when you're training, it thinks that you know, it's running from a hungry pack of lions every single day in order to survive. If you're doing that every single day, you know, it's going to want to find whatever weight or body type is best to, to run from the lions. As long as you're, as long as you're eating right and listening to your body, you know, it's going to adapt. Um, so and just I, find, find what works for you. I think it's also, I definitely remember looking at some riders and being like, dude, some of these guys are shredded. Like, how are they so ripped? I'm not. And I was just early into riding, definitely not eating clean. You know, I think the biggest thing that somebody said to me one time, you, it's so easy for you to stay skinny because you ride so much. And I said, dude, it's actually, I have to eat so much and I'm constantly burning so many calories that if you do the math, on say you're doing four hour rides all the time and I'm burning 4,000 kjs. But in order to uh, have that ride fueled, I'm going to eat 120 grams of carbs an hour, or maybe I'll even say in hour, uh, 100 an hour. That's going to be 120 times four hours times four calories. That's 1,900 calories. So I'm really in a 2,000 calorie deficit. Whereas if I went out for a two hour ride and I'm going to burn 2000 calories, I might only need to eat. Let's say I'll be, I'll go over a little bit, 140, 70 an hour. I mean, I would eat more. This is, I do promote eating nine. I'll do what I say. 90 an hour. So 180, that's 700 calories. So 2000 minus 720 is 1280. There's really only a 700 calorie difference between doing the four hour ride and the two hour ride. So that's sounds like a lot, but it's not, that's a slice and a half of pizza. So people think that just cause they see me ride four hours all the time, I can eat whatever the hell I want. It's like, no, it's, there's a little bit more wiggle room, but it's still eating clean is going to make you way leaner, way more uh, looking better and having that like cyclist body that um, I always want. I'm like, how are people doing that? And I just was not eating right. So I think that's a huge yeah. thing. 
Um, I, I mean, and the thing is, like, if you're eating right and you're eating the right macronutrients and, you know, the carbs that you need, you're going to be able to train harder, too. And mm -hmm. you train harder, you burn more calories. So I'm eating more than I ever have, but I can do way higher power than I used to be. And I'm able to do more volume. And as a byproduct, like I'm at, I'm just as lean as I've ever been, um, you know, and oh man, what was this? What was, what was I going to say? Yeah. Don't bonk on the way home thinking that you're getting the extra calories. Like, oh, I'm right. not going to eat this gel so I can eat That's another half of a cookie. It's like what I used to do all the time. <laughs> that makes no sense. That's not, that's not the way to do it. And I think the other thing too is, you know, when you're talking about the rest day, don't eat too much. People forget that, okay, I'm doing a rest day. Well, if you're doing a rest day, aren't you going hard the next day? Quite possibly. And so if it's a rest day, sure, you don't need to have, maybe you don't need the biggest breakfast, but you definitely need to be starting in those carbs by lunch. So your body has time to replenish the glycogen. Right. I mean, I'm carbs all the time. And even though I ride more than other people, same thing, it depends on the intensity. You need to have the carbs for the intense rides, you're gonna have a ride like I did today, which was definitely not inspiring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, you know, on the rest days, I think, yeah, it is. You also have to remember that your body is repairing damage, you know? So this is something that's not well understood, but they always, in my opinion, you know, they always say like calories in calories out. So, you know, I'm not riding today. And I'm not exercising, so I'm only burning 2,000 calories today. But it's like, okay, but you're glycogen depleted and your muscles are damaged. And like, okay, even though you ate a lot yesterday, it's like, doesn't your body still need some extra energy to adapt? Because totally. if I wake up, you know, in one scenario, I've been on bed rest for a month, haven't moved a muscle. And in the other scenario, I wake up in the morning and I've just raced the Tour de France. Like I'm going to need more calories, even if I'm not exercising, you know, my body needs that extra energy. So, you know, I mean, this is unrelated to our main point, but just listen to your body. Um, and you're, I mean, you're, you're not going to be eating like a bunch of carbs on your rides. So you're naturally going to be eating less, but just eat healthy. Just the main points of this in general, eat healthy, listen to your body, train hard, and, you know, you're probably going to find your, your best. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks for doing this pod. For those listening on Apple or Spotify, please leave us a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, tell a friend. If you need anything, hit us up, Landry at evoke.bike, Brendan at evoke.bike, and we will talk to you soon. See you, man. Peace.